And good morning. Let's get that scene switcher turned back on and we'll get going. There we go. Well, you know what? Let's update read chat for a minute. Test. Yeah, there we go. Interesting that Rust Analyzer gives us this information, telling us that it's not expanded. I wonder why it's not expanded. Is it just for the analysis that it didn't expand? Hmm. All right. So we're going to be working on colors and things. Oh, Godot did not show up. Let me fix that. Where are you? There we go. Alright, so if we run this scene, what do we end up with? It's a gray screen, really. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, we don't have a camera. Of course. More than sarcastic, Dante. Let's add a camera. Ooh, what's this one do? Oh, oh just a camera. Get a camera. Back a little bit. Set up our scene here. Get rid of that output there. Okay. Pop it down a touch. A little more. A little more. Okay, I just had a preview window. Oh, I could do a two viewports or three. Split it sideways there. And we'll bring it in. Probably going to need a background on this eventually, but this should do for now. We'll start with it there. Let's see, if we run this, and now we do get that set up. Um, it's not actually showing the deal with game. Why isn't it? Let me check on the scene switcher again.
looks like it's running. Uh, let me let the dog in. Go right back. Turns out she did not want in. She just wanted to go chase things. That's fine. Alright, so back to the task switcher. Why doesn't it see this window? Maybe they're both called Godot? I think they're both called to down, so I'll just have to do this manually. Or I can just switch back over here. Morning, Sarcastic Dante. How are you? Alright. For some reason, it's not seeing the game. fix that. Goodness. Feels like everything broke all of a sudden. Okay. So there's there's the game. Right there. Eating pizza? Code is working? <laughs> oh man. Woke up early today. Yeah, because I lost my wife. She was. It's like one of those things where you wake up and, you know, she normally does some stuff in the morning. And. I, I had to go find her. Just like compelled to go find her. So So Turns out she didn't slip and fall and like on the ice or anything like that. She was just doing crap. 
crafting stuff. Oh, she says she's cleaning my mess. I love you, sweetie. Yeah. All right. Um. All right. So we're gonna add some colors. <laughs> hey, Maddie, live. Good morning. Down on me just a moment ago that, that these properties could get set up using um, using the macro. Look at Goodell. Go rust over here. See, this was in GD Native Tests UI. Properties. So you can set up these before get, before sets, like so. So with hints, well, the hint one is, uh, that one is, um, I guess, master only. It's not released yet. Could have done it that way, but the thing that we would lack then would be this here. Get the, um, can you set the name via those? I don't remember. Do you hint, basic hint, fail, inherit. That's the only, only set of hint tests. Our tests here. Label. We can label. Label would be nice to have. There. I dent on this. Yeah, that's coming from that. What if? What if we also had this set up so that you could? provide a different name. Well, that would be nice. That's the one thing that I'd be missing here. I think, I think that we had everything for these other pieces. Was default in there? I think with default is, yeah, we, we can provide a default. Wrong window. A hint. Setter and getter. Do we have to provide a setter and getter? Probably. I do not think that they will create one on their own.
Oh, they do provide that. Okay. But you can hook in via the before set and after set, before get, after get. Hmm. Neat. Let's go change this. Config.hint. And what are they calling this? This is a name that we want to set up. Property. Naming things are the hardest. I want it to be consistent. Morning, Nightshade, dude. How are you? I'm doing well here. There's property builder. Oh, that returns a property builder. Um, we want a class builder. I think it's called, yeah, class builder, add property, name, okay. We'll call this property name. Where does this config come from? Property attribute args. You know what? I'm on the wrong branch. <laughs> All right. Tell a bad joke. Oh, that's funny. Let's see. I went to the doctor. He said I'm at risk of having a heart attack due to high sodium intake. I took what he said with a grain of salt. To there, I need to change the branch that I'm on. Get status, Get stash. Yeah. That's that. Now, in this case, we get error that's being added. Here we have default, path, hint, etc., etc., etc. Add a name. It's going to be very similar to this. That feels like it needs to be um, 
cleaned up, doesn't it? Most of these are identical. Feels like we should have a positive test case for these as well. There's a slight difference down here. Over oh, path. Yes, because some of these are paths. What is path allowed to be? Hmm. Looks like I did not have a test set up for path. What does path do? string Yeah, that's where the builder finishes. Oh, oh, it's already there. It's just called Path. Hmm, 
Okay. Let's scratch that. That. Fancy. That should be down there for the override. Let's see, this is going to be a dot dot slash. Be native. Doras. Did not finish that quickly. Try again. Mm, cargo check. Oh, um, patches. The non root package will be ignored. That's why. Now its path is off by one. Okay, that's taking a little bit longer. That's good. Looks like it's taking its time. Let me have some water while we wait for that. there. Oh, okay. This one's going. And this is the build. The previous one was the check. This is the build. Oh, 
Oh, looks like they took turns a little bit. Okay, now while it's doing that, let's go and change this. Because it looks like we can do just about everything here. Property has a path. Path equals. Full width. Int. Equals. And then we have to give it a path to a hint, don't we? This needs to return a float hint or something more generic. Let's return a float hint for now. Wrong number of type arguments for a float hint? Oh, I have to give it the type of the float? Why can it not figure this out? Oh, it's a float hint range. No, no, that's a enum variant. The type should be float hint. I just don't feel like giving it the T. I have to. I thirty two. No, F thirty two. That might work. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so let's do height. Let's change this from width hint to maybe size hint. Dimension hint. Hmm. Uh, width height. Dimension hint. They can use the same one now. Right. Oh, I didn't do default on there. Um, with D. Oh. 
Do I have to give it a function for this? Oh, I missed your message, Sarcastic Dante. Oh, nice. UI property basic I have studied Machiavelli Aristotle gave and Plato yet you still equate my intellect to that of a potato this place would fall apart without my ever watchful eye they might tell you I'm a half wit it's a great big bloody lie so don't call me a moron I'm super there is no conundrum that my core cannot confuse. No, don't call me a moron, you frosted balloon. My IQ is the infinite yeah. space from here to the moon. My IQ what is default here? Quote dot with default and then just a default value. So default value in this case. Be just default and yes. Alright. We got that, that. Got the range. Set it in the gutter. Done. All right, now for the border thickness, this one has different range. Get that set up. It's called border thickness. Is 0 0.5. Go. We can remove the register builder on that. That was it. Yeah, 0 to 5. Now we can almost get rid of these. Getters are gone. Setters are not gone because there's a little bit more magic in there. I 
after the set, we need to have this called. So if we are in the scene, it needs to reposition or layout again. Well, luckily, there are some after set methods here that we can set up. And they can all be the same thing. Uh, but what's the function signature? <laughs> okay, so you do get basically self and the owner. So after the set, mutable reference, so exclusive reference to this. I forgot to rename that, that's border thickness hint. so hard. Now in this case, what are we doing? We're this is the after a property has been modified, we re relay out everything. Redraw. Let's call it that. This is a canvas. And the owner is spatial. Now we can get rid of the rest of these. Wow, that saves so much code. Ah, but we only want to do that if this isn't seen. See if that works. The 
function signature wrong? No. I misspelled it. There we go. Hey, it built. That means it's going to work. Reload that. It's all still there. All right. Nice. Still working. Fantastic. Okay. That's just a big white blob. Um, one viewport. That's good. That works pretty well. Get status. Ah. Yeah, we still need to use the local build of GD Native because of the hint. That's not. It's not released yet. So what's the best way to contact a fish? You drop him a line. Dead end. All right. That does save a lot of code. Makes this a little noisy here. Let's clean it up just a touch. You approve of that joke. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad that path is there. That's really nice. to change also the color. I want some value that represents color. Border color. And what is that in Godot? Does Godot have a color? It must have a color. Beauty native core types color. Also in Prelude. Now, do we need a hint for this? Default. We 
should make the default color white, black, fuchsia. These aren't static, but I don't think it has to be static. I think it wants to be a literal though. I don't know if this is gonna work. And what are the types on the F32s? Red, uh, okay, so if they're F32s, it's a value between zero and one. Um, so sure, 1.0, RG, 1.0, B, Alpha, expected literal, yeah. Does that mean I can have value up here? Almost. Let's take that value. This could be this could be a little bit more interesting here. Um, I mean, the default value that's that's neat for you're doing like a 1.0, 2.0, you know, just literal values. But if we wanted something, something a little more, so what do we get inside of the? Okay, it's limitation of meta name value that we're using. That's too bad. Gonna look down a little bit further in here. Yeah, with default just gets included verbatim. Alright, so we'll do the defaults a different way on this. Since we can't provide default there, I don't really want to stamp out the um, properties like we were before. Make that 
and optional. Now the hint here should be a color hint. I thought there were some default hints in here. So if you're doing something like a, you just wanted to use a flow tent or something like that. Color hint, possible hints for color. Hmm. Not super helpful. So this impulse flow tent What is that implementing? Is it this one? I mean, that's not a that's not a great hint there. Color hint seems really lacking here. I like more than that. Let's turn Cadell. Let's go to scripts, search help. Color. They have a whole bunch of colors actually defined. It's interesting. No idea. No idea. Right, 
maybe we don't need to provide a hint for color because it'll figure it out. And how will it do with the optional color on that? Hmm, we'll have to see. save, reload the DLL. I, I say DLL. Shared object. Whatever it is. I guess technically it's a shared object. Choose colors. Interesting that I don't like the order. I want the co colors together. I know it's silly, but. further arrange these, but I'm going to leave them for now. All right, let's, let's do something with those. That's neat. That's really cool. So now if we don't have a color, it's fine. Now I didn't print out what we do with the colors, but here's reposition. I want to rename that to maybe redraw. this what a different macro well like uh if ILS if let some let's patch that in And it needs to be on the beginning of a line. Oh, it's not true, though. 
yeah. Look at that. Oh, look at that. How about some? We're gonna skip that one. Actually, is there a self dot? There it is. If flat. Ah. Uh, yeah, that's a better macro than the one I had. I just don't think about it in that in that way. All right. So if we do have something like this, then we need to. Create a material, toss a color onto it, and apply it to that mesh. It's either that or we take the mesh's material that it currently has, which we could set up ahead of time. Use Godot for what Godot's good at. Huh? Material. We could set this up already. Spatial material or shader material. reason I'm, I'm pausing there is because I have this idea that I want to use uh, shader material for this um, for some interesting effects later but the simplest thing would be to use the spatial material now I could just do that let's save Shader. Oh, we can play around with a visual shader. Fun. Visual shader. Look at that. That's cool. Input. Can I name it? Can I name the input? So we want, we want to attach that one. Let's say I want to save that. I name this? Inputs are typically named, aren't they? Yeah, I think they're named. What are those rectangles anyways? Uh, the ones that we've been working on or the shader ones? These here, these, these pieces up here. Um, this is um, kind of a UI that lives in 3D space that I'm planning on animating. For some reason, it is difficult to, ah, oh, there we go, to catch that circle. All 
right, so we have this visual shader. It's going to hit save. It's a fragment shader. That's fine. Let's see what it looks like. Here's the code. <laughs> okay. I actually don't want that one. I want to add a node. But I want a parameter. Expression common. No, no. Interesting. I'm not sure what it's called in this. Sure, expand all. Operators, variables. Oh, maybe a variable. Functions, common. Da, da, da. Yeah, I thought it was going to be input, and maybe it is, but it doesn't feel like it. See this. Now this is everything that's available to shader not parameters coming in from outside i mean maybe they're not created that way modes flags resources hmm. no there's normally you just toss it in up there Let's, let's try this. Um, what, Bob? Color constant. That's not what we want either. We don't want the fragment color. Here. We name that. Name it Bob for a minute. Drag that in. Oh, look at that. Finally. means that we should now have shader params here and can adjust this. Yay! All right, so now we can make these different colors. Fantastic. All right, let's go with fuchsia. Perfect. So if it's not set, we'll know. That was mostly painless. Is that the only element in the game so far? It is. However, that's going to be most of the elements in the game. There's probably going to be some sort of background to it. Um, but these are going to be... Um, I'm thinking a little bit more of sci-fi-esque um, floating control panels in space. So we have this. I 
I think I'm going to go ahead and save this out, this material. And I should probably start to put these uh, in their own directory. Let's see. Canvas into its own directory there. Let us save. Sure, save all that. Now in here we're going to save this material. I cancel. It's material, right? Yep. Save. Descriptive. Save this. Oh, make it unique first. Make unique. Save. I was shader. We can set the same elements here. All right, there's the whole thing. But if we wanted to add some sort of cool effect, we do that in the visual shader now some sort of um, digital wipe coming across it. Do that in the shader. That. We can control the color. Let's go in there a little bit. I want that to be toned down a little bit. Let's take the alpha down. toned down quite a bit. Nice. Hopefully it's not the same exact instance. Like all of these technically be a unique instance of that mesh, of that material. Now let's try to get a hold of that programmatically and set those color properties on that. The reason I want to do that is I, I want to be able to control the background color from the foreground color, so, from the border color, so that, well, they're distinguishable. And then for uh, events in the game, let's say, you know, there's some sort of shaking or something that moves the border separate from the background or, um, an alert happens, maybe the border turns red. Okay. And that's going to be on each one of these, isn't it? Each one is going to get a background color. Hmm. I'm going to either punch each one of these up in there, create a little function. All right, so the, let's work on the background first. It's the easiest to see. So what type of object is this? The stars align. 
Ooh, the background's a little strange too. Is it, it's got this CSG mesh in it. And the background here is for its, um, to modify its transform origin. Let's rename this. Nothing's referring to it yet. Plane might be more accurate. Quad. Whatever. What should we call it? I mean, it's, it's of type CSG mesh. We could get that type directly. Let's do that. Is that in the prelude? Nope. What is in the prelude? CSG mesh. Beauty native API CSG mesh. Oh. Gotta pour some more water. Here. These are not spatial, these are mesh instance. Background underscore mesh, mush. And we need to get the shader off of it, the material. So, what is that API? CSG mesh, got a method called material. It's handy. It gives us a ref to the material itself. It's not used. Perfect. However, the type here is ref. So if let's do this again. If
I think we're going to pull this out into a um, function, so don't worry. Now, what can we do on a material? We should have a T-rough material now. Yep, T-rough material. All right, class hierarchy. Resource, reference, and object. This isn't all that helpful. I thought this was going to be, say, but we're getting a hold of the material here. CSG mesh didn't have much on it. The material here, and material doesn't have much. What kind of material is it? Ah. Should have said it's a shader material. So we have to cast that to a shader material. And then we can set the params on it. Set shader param. And what is it called? What we called it? Color. Probably with a lowercase c. that actually compile? Oh wow. Let's see if it works. Then we'll extract it and use it on more than just the background. I 
Is OBS picking up ruts? Uh, let's see. It's actually not picking up the right thing. Come on. I doubt. There we go. Yeah, if that's ever out of sync or I'm talking about something that's not changing, let me know. Ooh, look, we can set the background color. That's doing all of them, though. That's not what we want. I mean, it might be okay, but I do want them to be independent. Unique. Save. Good, that doesn't change it. We still have all three. Do not think I want to make local. Come in here. Okay, so this material make unique. Save. Go into that. This shader make unique. Save. Come back to game. We figured out how to get the height different for each one of these. The, the, well, the width, really. We can change each one of those independent of the other. But for some reason, when we set the property on one of these, it does it for all of them. And that must be either because mesh is shared. Oh. Okay, let's check that. Mesh. Make unique. Oh, what is that? Let's undo that. What does make unique do? Online docs. Not a function call. Shaders. Just happens to have both words. Click on the tool. Oh, hold on. You can also adjust individual instances, set the balance value back to zero, and then the main scene. 
Resources like physical ma physics material are shared between instances by default, so we need to make it unique. Click on the tool button in the top right of the inspector dock and select Make Sub Resources Unique. Oh, okay. Is that here? We do that for everything. Oh, look, it went away. Alright, let's try again. Background. Set those. We could have different ones for each one of these, it just doesn't seem to make sense. And somehow, I'm not getting past the instan instancing of these elements. We have scenes down to here, and then an individual element here. Well, and those, of course, are sub scenes. at least. <laughs> Tokyo Runtime Worker Panic. Test passed. Are you using the uh, the utils? Sar Sarcastic Dante for the, uh, the test runners for Tokyo? Sub resource. Close that. Open it again. Canvas. All right. Huh. Material load. Scenes canvas. Material. Uh, test util feature, I 
I think so. Oh, you know what? They'll have a whole section probably on their website. Um, look at uh, RS, I'm guessing. Here's the macro, and that means that you can have these async functions as tests. You can also configure, you know, which flavor you want. You have single-threaded, multi-threaded. Unable to turn zero to status code? Huh. <laughs> Exit status. what I think of when, when you say that, but might not be it. Doesn't seem all that helpful. Let's try running this again.
that the world is happening I just stop and stare Your smile, so bright Makes the sun want to run and hide I can't believe my mind The impossible is possible In my dreams And in my dreams You're mine I look at that right. stars at night Think of you And wonder where Let's try this again. Control, color, background. <laughs> Come on. Oh. Drawing blanks on this one, guys. I might have to reach out to Discord or someone. Material. Get her prams. She's like a yellow for this. I can set all of those on there. They're, they're separate. For some reason. So if I, hold on. So where is it? Correct. So if I come into here and I say, oh, you know what? I'm going to change canvas here. Change that. Oh, but it's going amongst instances of that. So maybe. Okay, so the shader set to yellow. The canvas set to fuchsia. And then if we go over to I'll say intercom, click on here, could then make sub resources unique on this element. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Look at this. The colors here are not set, but they are set in game. So up here they're set. Alright, so let's say I turn this on. Oh, no, no, I don't want editable children. Okay, that's fine. Here, turn off editable children. For that, that, and that. Oh, can't do that there. Okay, one at a time then. It's just so much easier the other way. So now we have each one of those. Let's go into intercom, change its background color separate from the others. Why is it red? When did I ever set the shader to red? All right, so background, let's set this one to go into map. This one's going to be green. We're just doing RGB here. Give that a save. Go back out to game. Now, see, they're all the same. Even though I set the one separate from the other. Okay. Maybe this is some odd effect. Let's open up game again. Oh, still has third world children. Let's 
Save that. Do not want editable children. Okay. Persisted that time. If we go into intercom, it's red. Men. Come in here, make sub resources unique. See, it doesn't even have a background color yet. be the order so intercom oh interesting it's black again I'm, I'm gonna restart Goodell something's weird all right there's game looks like it's overlapping it's fine we'll fix that in a bit focusing on colors what do we have? We have border here, set to nothing. In map, border is set to the green color. Okay. And in keypad, border is set to nothing. Let's set it to blue. Is that for blue? Not the that's the greenest blue I've ever seen. have any ANSI defaults it's just black but on the material itself just set it to white or something green. And this one's green. At least these are different colors now. That's good. Say 7F, FF. we wanted 0.4 on the border thickness on these. Probably a 9, a 0 before. Yeah. Okay, now let's go into map. Put it up 4. Width 10. That's fine. 
Let's save. Keypad. I think we're gonna go with like a six on the width on this. Mm, that's, that's pretty thin, like maybe six and a half. Okay. But then in this scene, they get the same shader values. You know what? Let's run it. Yeah, they're the same here. Sub resources unique on these? Why not? Giggles. Save. Close it. Open. Are we somehow setting this on everything on accident? Or maybe I'm using the wrong material here. Here we have a CSG mesh and it's got this empty material here. Maybe it should be that material as opposed to the resource material. So if we clear this one, for that, and we'll go up and choose the material uh, load scenes canvas material. Right. Yeah, it is yellow. And we can do the same thing here, I think. Maybe not. Next song. Looks like we already have it in that slot here. Give that a save. Go back to game. So now they're all yellow. Great. Intercom again. Oh, no changes now. Getting the set run. No errors though. Let's go back to the CSG mesh. There it is. So what's the difference between this material and this material? Current material of the primitive mesh. Okay. Hopefully the documentation will help here. The material used in drawing the CSG shape. Ah. Uh, so this one's just the current material? Okay. Fine. Scenes, canvas, material. Save. Unique. Save. What if I click into that? Maybe here? Make sub resources unique? Maybe I had to be in the shader material? But we could go into the visual shader. Close that. 
back out. Make sure everything is saved. Okay, so we have three different colors there. We have one color here, and it's picking up the keypad color for RGB. So the last one in the scene is overriding that value. And what if we don't do this here? Does this, does this fix it somehow? Project. But we have to reload the DLL. Reload the library. Okay, so each one of these is now using the same colors. Dirtful children, so we could do that, come back in here. Well, maybe I had this at the wrong level. So if, if I said, okay, this has editable children. And this one has editable children. And then this one. What does make local do? Oh, literally just makes it local. Don't want to do that. Here, okay, now let's go back to game. Everything's yellow. Here come, just to test. Click into here, click on your resources, make it red. Save, go back to game. Now they're all red, all right? All right, I'm gonna have to reach out for help on this one. So. All right. Come canvas. Map. I'm gonna set the one on map. Actually, why was that one already red? So we come back to intercom. Yeah. Okay, so these two are sharing it already. I say make, or was it here? Click on this. Make sub resource unique. Save that. Back over to map. Same thing here. Save that, come back to game. Let's go ahead and change the color on this. It's supposed to be red. Ah. Okay. We're getting somewhere. All right, now for the keypad, we'll do the same thing. Make sub resource unique. Save. We're gonna make this blue. Some blue color. There we go. Now we wanted to be able to control that via the other properties. Now let's hook that code back up. See if we can control it this way. It's interesting that we had to make the border editable in place and then the sub properties unique. Okay, 
loading it again. All right. Now that we have that loaded, we go into intercom. Put that up. Close that. We're going to change our background to be some other color we haven't used yet. Save that, go back to game. Oh, thank you. Okay, so those are working independent of each other, finally. That's good. Now let's get the, the other pieces set up right, which means if we go through each one of these elements that we want to make unique, all of these, I can't make each one of those unique individually. If I just did it on order, sub resources unique. Load a map, order. Okay. All right. I'm guessing that it's it's going to say it's all these values down here in the bottom that are unique, and not the child elements that are unique. We'll find out. Okay, let's extract that to some sort of function. Should be able to extract out the shader material, etc. Okay. I'm gonna just pass it everything that it needs. Set color. We need to give it the mesh. Well, the option of the mesh. So we give the background mesh and then the color. Off that. Some of these are slightly different. Because we have CSG mesh and mesh instance. And a CSG mesh does not, I think, inherit from mesh instance. No. Geometry instance. It's got a material. Yeah. So I need this for two different types. Could implement this as some sort of trait, some utility trait. What else could we do? With shared function, that's usually good enough, but we don't have a common type here. Let's look at the rust side of it.
Yeah, this is a geometry instance. So even though they both have probably the same function. Oh, interesting. Now we have to get the mesh off of that. What's on the geometry instance where the um, material is? Material, material override. Surface material. That's the wrong one. So a CSG mesh and this other mesh are different. You know what? I'm going to change this one to be the same type as the other one. I'm just going to create a quad in Blender and export it. Silly. Let's just keep it simple. Uh oh. Oh, Blender. Oh, I'm so sorry. On a sec. Blender. Blender app. Blender. Open reason. Control. Okay. We have border, we have corners. We're just going to create another. It's going to create a plane. Rotate it 90, scale 0.5. Done. Come back over here. Oh, this means we can also change the origin. <laughs> we could put this wherever we wanted. So we'll, we'll leave it there. Okay, so edit mode. That's fine. This is our panel background. Just be clipping, good. That's fine. Go out of save, file, export, GLTF2 to control and export GLTF. Great. Yeah. Done in Blender. Quit Blender. That yeah, wasn't that hard. Come back in here. We are going to delete that thing. Goodbye. What? Save. What did it say? Oh, we're in math. We need to go into order. Eh, well, canvas. Inside of canvas, we are going to replace this change type. So it shall be a mesh instance. Oh, cancel. Delete it. Just delete it. All right, now from there, Where are our assets? Here we go. Panel background. Let's see. What's that on there? That is huge. Ah, I forgot to apply the scale and transform. Come on, Blender. File transforms. Save. File, export, GLTF2. Again. 
file system. So we did that. Close canvas, open canvas. All right. Ah, oh, that's not right. What's wrong with that thing? Transform. Oh, maybe that. Not that and that. There we go. Scene. All that mesh. And let's let's resize this. Let's it's doing the right thing, but it's at the wrong spot. Size seems right, but I'm gonna try resizing this again. What's what's the behavior? Yeah, that, that should be growing from the left. Let's fix this. Go back to ten. Save. So this thing should be down and to the right to your transform here should be off by one in each direction. Oh, negative one here. Ah, 0.5. It was 0.5. There we go. Okay. Turn those back on. Good. Setting the background color doesn't do anything. Oh. I did that inside the wrong wrong scene. That's unfortunate. We have to reset this. Transform, reset. And a border. Five, negative point five. Good. Back to game. So funny. Keypad. So this one's good. This one's good.
It's interesting that, that it's not picking it up. If we go into panel background itself, it looks good. We come into oh, map. Let's go into intercom. Intercom here. It says in a funky orientation. Maybe if we have this redraw itself. No? That, that, that's just not right in any way. So I'm wondering whether or not it's possible let's say, to reset these back to what they had been before. What is edit resource clipboard? No idea what that, that just did. So if I go back to canvas, Copy params, sure. And then I go into, well, maps, fine. Right here, let's paste params. Intercom, edit, paste params, ah. And where else? Ah, keypad. Those are back. Good. Now I have to change how we actually get to the material. Also. All right, so mesh, let's just make sure that those are unique. Intercom makes up resources unique. And same with keypad. Save all scenes. Okay. So now that we have a. It's not a CSG mesh. We have a mesh instance. There we go. And now with the mesh instance, All right, so there we have our mesh instance, and then we have color option to some color.
take this there. So if we have a background color and we have a mesh, what we can do real quick, and in this to background mesh and back. I could have searched and replaced or another fun stuff. using self huh. just one all right so how do we get this off of a mesh instance we could get the surface material and the surface material count I should return a rough to a material surface material go to zero so baby I can't live without you without you without you I can't live without you without you without you without you So then for each one of these, material needs to be set. Load scenes canvas material. All right, so there's map. Where's intercom? Save that, go to intercom, mesh, material empty, load. Oh, canvas material. Save and keypad. So they're all yellow. Let's change intercom. Its size is wrong. Order here should be, what was it, nine? Is that what we said? Save, come back. Oh, did it? Oh my goodness, did all of these get reset? Went four. Yeah, it looks like it was just the one. I wonder why. Oh, I must have set that on the wrong. When I was pasting properties earlier, I think I, I hit the wrong one. Because this here is not correct. Oh, no, no, this is canvas. This is good. All right, for map, order. Yeah, that looks fine. Background. Yep, yep that's not going to work yet. We have to compile it, make sure everything's good. Background mesh. Ah.
Oh, that's right. We already extract those in all the other cases. library uh oh again it does not behaving well So now I have those three elements again, and as we can see, it's sharing again. However, it does look to be coloring the borders, which is good. Oh, but we use the background color on that. Okay. So let's see. Yeah, this one should be green. That's fine. Let's go into keypad. This one's supposed to be blue. Good. Come on. Intercom. This one we had set up to red. Save that. Go back to game. Alright, now what we had done before, we came into here, clicked on this, to make resources unique. Did that. Same thing here. Okay. And once again. Oh, the material's gone. Load. Scenes, canvas, material. So we have R, G, and B. R, G, B. Each one of those has sub bits unique, but why? Now what's, why is this? Why, why does this not? Work right. Okay. Undo one. Somebody will understand this. Because it feels like I just made it unique, right? I clicked on that, did that. Do I have to now tell this to be unique? 
in keypad, and then in map, and then in intercom. Yes, okay, that's what I'm doing. That's what I have to do. Oh, these are set to border color. Border, 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 border. And then background. Your calm. Oh. Material. Make unique. Save. Well, that, that makes it a little easier being able to select many of these. All right, let's try to change the border color on this one. Ooh, there we go, RGB, lighter color. Save. Intercom. Red. All right, it's good for me right now. Probably gonna want to work on the, the shaders a little bit later. Make a little look a little bit more futuristic. I think that's a good start. At least those behave the right way now. All right, well, we're going to raid somebody. Um, if you have any suggestions, I'm all for it. I'm not seeing too much rust. I see... Oh, I am a hardliner. Let's go that route.
until next time. Bye-bye.